All right, we have 12 o'clock Eastern. We're going to go ahead and get underway. Welcome, everybody, to Own the Smartphone. Make the smartphone your superpower. Steps to maximize email, social, and text marketing. My name is Matthew Montoya, and we've got Ramona, our host, here as, with us as well. Now, normally, she'd be kicking things off and talking to you about the power of email, social, and text marketing before she brought me in, but she has lost her voice, and so I have the humble task of, uh, of being your host today. My name is Matthew Montoya. I'm Senior Manager of Partner Go to Market. <laughs> the title means is that I teach Constant Contact for a living, and I have done so. I'm now in my 14th year at Constant Contact, but I am honored to be representing Ramona, Ramona has been a partner of Constant Contact since about 2011. So Ramona and I go way, way back. What does it mean to partner with Constant Contact? Well, Ramona is your expert in the market. Ramona knows everything about Constant Contact, email marketing, social media marketing, and more. And she, because she's a partner of Constant Contact, she has front of the line access to things that are going on in digital marketing and Constant Contact. She has front of the line access to premium support. So she is quite an ace in your deck, a person to know. Now, speaking of things to know, we are recording today's presentation. And I'm glad because I am going to throw a lot of information at you today, probably more than you could absorb you want to watch for that recording on YouTube, and perhaps you'll share it on social media as well, and uh, uh, make sure that you have that content to review. So again, we are recording today's presentation. I'm going to bring my friend Bill with Constant Contact towards the end of the presentation. He'll talk to you about something really special that he and Ramona have teed up for you, but let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to cover today. So we're going to talk about how social media, email, and text move people closer to your business. Be willing to bet all of you attending today on social and on Zoom, well, you probably know that email marketing is something you should pay attention to, or you're probably using it. Social media, you've probably been there first, and text might be a little something new to you. Regardless, all three of these things work tremendously well in concert. Remember that word, because I'm going to bring that word in concert back a little bit later. We're going to talk about how to harness the strengths of each of those channels and how to have and provide a great experience that adds to your bottom line. So right off the top, let's talk about the big three here. Ultimately, when it comes to marketing, every marketer's goal, whether you're in business to business, business to consumer, even nonprofits, your ultimate goal is to send the right message, right people, right time in the right channels to drive action. Now, those first three, send the right message, right people, right time, probably inherently or even educationally, you knew that. But we need to think about the strengths of each channel to drive that action. So 86% of the world's population owns a smartphone. I bet that's not a surprise. I bet all of you have a phone sitting next to you, just like I do, just like I'm sure Bill does, just like Ramona does. And I'd be willing to bet you have checked that device today. And in fact, a few of you are maybe multitasking and have your phone in your hand right now. And what are you looking at? Well, you might be looking at some apps, but I'd be willing to bet all of you at some point today have looked at your email, have looked at your social, and have looked at your messages to see what things have come in. Who else is having, who else has that device sitting next to them? Who else is checking social? Who else is checking email? Who else is checking texts? Clients, your leads, your volunteers, your donors, your audience. They are all paying attention to this device. And you need to make sure that you are in the right place to reach them. According to a recent small business survey conducted by Constant Contact, consumers are most likely to be influenced by email marketing. Still the king, 34%. 30% are be, uh, likely to be influenced by text marketing. I suspect that this number will start to become more and more parallel as more and more marketers start to leverage SMS text marketing as we move into 2024 and beyond. 20% are motivated by social media. Now, social media... 20%, I don't mean to diminish it. Social media has a very powerful role, but there's some things around social media you need to be aware of. First off, you need to be aware that not everyone that follows you on social media actually sees your posts. That's very different than email and text marketing. The reason why not everyone on social media that follows you are seeing or may not be seeing your posts is because of algorithms. These are rules that social media puts in place to hide or show content based on what people are most interested in. So how do people show an interest in your product, in your service, in your business, in your nonprofit? By interacting with you. 
really need to make sure that people are interacting with us on social media to get the biggest bang for our buck on social media, where that's a little different than email. If people sign up for your newsletter, if people sign up for your email, they're going to get it delivered. And text marketing is a unique space where people can almost can't avoid your marketing, but you have to be very, very careful in that space. We want to make sure we use each of these channels. So we're going to call each of these a channel. Email marketing is a channel. Social media is a channel. Text marketing is a channel. We need to use each of these in the right way to drive more engagement. So let's talk about how do we do that? How do we harness the strengths of each channel? I'm going to unveil an idea that at first will seem very strange, but as I get through it, it might make more and more sense. Constant contact. We market ourselves. Ramona marks, uh, markets herself. Most businesses market themselves across multiple channels, email and social, maybe email, social, and text marketing, right? Well, at Constant Contact, we employ the party principle. So what is the party principle? Well, the party principle breaks everything up into three categories, social, email, and text. You want to treat social media as the big party. The most people are going to be there. You're going to find a lot of your audience. It is a large, large group. And if we think about certain social media channels, things like Facebook, these are large groups. But we want to refine the experience to people, right? So while everyone is at the big party, we want to motivate them to come to the after party. And that's email marketing. These are going to be people that have selected themselves to receive more refined information from you. The relationship you have with your email subscribers are going to be more, for lack of a better word, intimate than with your social media followers. Why? Because they rose their hand and they said, yes, I want that marketing. Social media is very transitory. People are going into social media and sometimes stumbling upon content. Email marketing was requested. And there's a very big difference there. When people subscribe to your email marketing, they are giving you permission to send to them. And the reason why we need to think about that is because permission is power. When people give you permission to email you, uh, email them, they are telling you, hey, I know what you do. I know what you sell. I know what you offer. I want to know more about that. This is not cold calling. This is not blind marketing. People know what they're in for. They know you. How else? How do we know they know you? Because they signed up for your email marketing, right? On top of that, this may be the very first yes in your relationship. People are saying, yes, I want more information. It's important to leverage social media, which is, I think, probably the knee-jerk place most of you start. Most of you are probably at least on Facebook. And we want to focus people into our email funnel. We want them to get into our after party email. Well, if email is the after party, my friends, then text marketing is the VIP party. These people are the most elite of the elite of your customers, your leads, your volunteers, your donors, your stakeholders, because not only have they rose their hand and said, yes, I want your text marketing, but that is a very intensive space. When you arrive in people's text messaging, you're coming into the same place that family, friends, coworkers, et cetera, are, and that is a very prime location. So we need to, te 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 need to treat these people with the VIP experience that they deserve if we're going to motivate them to buy from us, donate to us, attend our events, or do whatever it is we're trying to get them to do. We need to think through positives and negatives of text marketing. So what I'm going to do today over our next 40 minutes or so is talk to you about how we leverage each of these and how we funnel people from social media, the big party, to the after party, to the VIP party. So let's break these down a little bit further. Email marketing is a great place for you to share content beyond just email and SMS. Because it's a large audience, we can go broad and start to identify things that are reson resonating with people, noticing what they like, what they comment on, what they share gives us some idea of what we might want to develop in content for email and text marketing. It's also a great place for us to meet brand new people. It is a big party. Everybody's on social media, and most people are on only a handful of big social media, Facebook, Instagram, right? So we need to make sure that we're there and we're aware that this is where we're going to capture new attention as well, capture new followers. I'm going to funnel those people into our email marketing where we can reach our audience directly, meaning we don't have those algorithms 
We don't have those rules hiding our content from people. It's arriving directly in their inbox. It allows us to have robust professional messages that provide people more detail. A lot of people ask me, Matt, what's the secret sauce to email marketing? The secret sauce is relevancy. The more relevant the content, the more likely people are going to buy, donate, attend, or whatever it is we're trying to get them to do. But ultimately, the second piece of successful email marketing, there's relevancy and the fact that we are trying to get people to stay, are trying to get people to keep our companies top of mind. We want to make sure that our organizations are top of mind and email marketing is really good at that. The reason why email marketing is so good at that, again, we've already established that that message will be delivered. We've established that people have asked for that message, but we also need to be aware that not everyone can buy the second you hit send on your computer. When that email goes out, not everybody's in a place to buy or donate or attend that moment. There's This is called the buying cycle. Every organization has a different buying cycle. Some people, if we think about real estate, it might take years for somebody to come up with the idea of buying or selling a home to when they actually take action. Other organizations have a very short buying cycle. Organizations like restaurants have a very short buying cycle because we're hungry at least three times a day. So we need to make sure that we're staying top of mind and that's what email marketing does very, very well. Text marketing is obviously a place for a very short message, but a great place for very time sensitive messages. That event that's coming up this Friday, registration closes, that sale that ends next Saturday, this is going to be the place to have that kind of content. It's also a place to treat people with that special respect they deserve. You want to have unique content that people may not be able to find anywhere else to reward them for signing up for your text messages. So let's break these down even further. Let's go into social media for awareness and engagement. Years ago, word of mouth used to happen at the old water cooler or in the office, right? Or maybe across a telephone. Now word of mouth happens online on social media. Happens anytime somebody reviews us or mentions us or recommends us or connects to our organizations in some way. On social media, your organization has an opportunity to be part of these conversations, which increases the chance of people discovering you and sharing what you offer. I've been in this business now for 21 years as a marketer, and I've been with Constant Contact for 14, and I can tell you that I have been fortunate enough to teach 14,000 small businesses and nonprofits in person, face-to-face. -face. I've taught probably 20,000 across, uh, across calls like this. And one thing I have seen time and time and time again when it comes to social media is many organizations, they get it. Yeah, Matt, shut up. I get it. I need to be on social Social media, I'm already on social media. What I do see people do, unfortunately, is they'll set up the social media accounts and they'll walk away. Well, that's done. Let's do the next thing. If you're going to be successful at social media marketing. You need to be in it to win it, meaning you need to be regularly posting and you need to definitely be paying attention to what people are responding to. Again, by learning what people are responding to, we are learning more about the content that they find relevant. They leverage that to create more blog, blog content, email content, website content, and ultimately text content. We also need to be responding and encouraging that interaction because that's what changes those algorithms. That's what changes those rules. The more people interact with us, what they're doing is they're telling Facebook, they're telling Instagram, they're telling LinkedIn, I like this person, I like this company, I like this service, I want to know more, please show me more. That's the real secret sauce to social media is we need to make sure we're engaging. And your options, your menu of social media can sometimes feel overwhelming. There's a lot of platforms out there. I and mean, coming back to my experience teaching so many, pe uh, so many people, a lot of people feel like they have to be everywhere. You can't possibly be everywhere and be successful. Reason for that is because this takes time. The reason for that is this takes strategy. What you wanna do is you wanna focus on the channels that you are most likely to find the audience you're seeking and the channel that most likely supports the kind of content and the kind of organization you are. So let's break these down a little bit, but I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. You probably know what many of these are, if not all of them. Facebook, obviously the biggest party of all. Fantastic place for you to find a very large audience. Most people are on Facebook, right? Now, there are differences in demographics, and some of you are probably shouting at your computer, well, the young younger people aren't on Facebook. The main thing is we're trying to cast a broad net right? We can narrow down and focus a little bit later, but Facebook's a great place to cast that broad net. 
Now, the challenge we have on Facebook is it is so popular and so filled with people that we can get lost, not only because of algorithms, but also just because there's so many other conversations going. Instagram's a great place for very visual uh, experiences. So if your product lends itself to being very visual, right? It's a fantastic place for you to share that content. LinkedIn is obviously the place you want to be leading with our Pinterest, also very visual. Pinterest is also a great place for you to share educational type content, checklists, and other kind of information that people can take away as education. LinkedIn, now I'll get to LinkedIn, is obviously a very professional place, especially for my friends in the business to business world. You want to be paying attention to LinkedIn. Business to consumer does have a role to play. Nonprofits do have a role to play on LinkedIn, but not as strong as business to business. Twitter, or now called X, is a very fast-moving social media, and you're going to be competing with a lot of news, politics, and other items. Really want to think through, is your content moving as fast as X does? Most organizations probably don't have content developed at the speed that X, formerly called Twitter, moves. You need to have a very consistent and very constant marketing strategy with content if you're going to perform well on X. YouTube, the king, right? YouTube's a fantastic place for video content, obviously, but especially uh, educational and informational and entertaining content. And lastly, um, organizations like Alignable, other kinds of kind of networking organizations that have a social networking component, you want to be considering things like that as well. So... <laughs> That's a lot on that menu, right? How can you possibly get it all done? Well, again, we're going to talk a little bit further about this in a second, but you want to narrow down to where your audience most likely will be and the kind of content you're delivering. But when it comes to content, don't feel like you constantly have to invent brand new content all the time all uh, to be on all the platforms. Repurpose your content. If you're doing email marketing, use that content on social media. If you're using, if you're writing for your blog, use that for social, use that for your email, use that for uh, text marketing. And also one thing a lot of organizations don't consider is sharing user generated content. Most marketers, especially small business and small nonprofit marketers, do a lot of talking about themselves. It's very, very natural. Here's what's going on in our store. Here's what's going on in our nonprofit. Here's what's going on in our, our company. Here's what's our latest product, right? What you want to try to do is you want to inject your consumer into the story as much as possible. How does it affect them? How do they feel about it? What problem does that solve? One way you can uh, do that is by actually having them help you with your content. And the most common way organizations do this is through testimonials. You really want to be making sure that if you have a happy customer, you have a happy stakeholder, you have somebody that your nonprofit has changed their lives, try to get that with permission as a testimonial. You'll actually reach audiences with a much more compelling story by user-generated content. Now, while I don't have it as a bullet up here, another strategy you can employ is look at sister organizations, organizations that don't compete with you that might help you with content development. And maybe you can throw them a favor and help them with content as well. Also, and lastly, look at your vendor database, right? People that you are paying to help you with your website, people that you are paying to help you with uh, um payroll or something like that, there might be a compelling story there as well. You don't have to create it all your own. Make sure when it comes to social media, you're focusing your time and energy in the places that make the most sense. You need to make sure you're probably spending at least five minutes each day to drive awareness. How do we drive awareness? It's more than just making that post. We need to make sure that we're following what that post is actually causing. The likes, the comments, the shares. We want, to, when somebody comments, they're handing you something very, very valuable. So you want to respond to that comment. If it's a positive comment, thank them. If it's a negative com comment, you definitely need to get on top of that and respond to it and provide the kind of customer service that makes your organization look great in front of your audience. We're going to talk about that customer service component in just a moment. And ultimately, our ultimate goal on social media is to get them to take action. Now, one action you might want to regularly ask people to do is leave the big party of social media and come join you in that after party. And what is the after party? It is email marketing. So we want to use email marketing to take that uh, uh, awareness, people are aware of your organization, and we want to start to build a stronger relationship with them so that we can move them through that sales cycle 
and get them to take the action we want. So email, the power of email, and I said this a little bit earlier, is the fact that people give you permission. You need permission to use a tool like Constant Contact. Not only a US law, it's also just smart. When people give you permission to mail them, email them, they are raising their hand. They are giving you a positive buy signal. They are aware of what you do, aware of what you offer, and they are asking for more information. So it allows us to get that first yes in many relationships. One way that you can get people to sign up is ask them for their information and have them fill out a form like this. By the way, this is a form that's available to constant contact consumers. You also want to share in that form some kind of language on what they can expect. You can expect two emails a month from us. You can expect three emails a month from us. And if you do text marketing, text marketing is also permission-based. Permission and a form like this might be a great place to also collect their permission to text them. Whatever you do, make sure that when you're doing email marketing, you never buy or trade lists. Buying lists, fairly obvious. If you buy an email marketing list from somebody, how do the people on that list know you? There's no way they'll know you. And their recourse is going to be, I don't know you, unsubscribe. I don't know you, mark you as spam. Those are things you don't necessarily want, especially to be marked as spam. So make sure you don't buy lists, but the same concept with trading lists. I'm a nonprofit in this space. There's a sister organization in the state next door. Let's trade lists and email market to each other's audience. You shouldn't do that because they don't know you and they're going to mark you as spam. They don't know you and they might unsubscribe to you. It's ultimately un unsuccessful. And it's against U.S. federal law. So you want them to join a list? Ask them to join a list. Now, one thing, a strategy you may want to employ that's more effective than just asking people to join a list is make it about them. If this were a live presentation where I could see you raise your hand and I could hear your comments, I'd say to you, hey, how many of you want to get more email? None of you want to get more email. Ramona doesn't want to get more email. Bill doesn't want to get more email. I don't want to get more email. Nobody wants more email. What we need to make sure is we're establishing what's in it for the audience. The way that you can provide what's in it for the audience is through offering something of value, something of value. Now, it doesn't have to be monetary. It can be valuable in other ways. We'll break down that idea in just a moment, but make sure you're asking for people's contact information, asking them to join a list where they are. Now, this is going to differ according to the different kinds of businesses and nonprofits we have on this call and watching this recording. But if you have an in-person experience in some way, you want to make sure that you're collecting contact information in that office, on the phone, at events, print material. Remember, most of your audience is probably not interacting with you on digital media. They are interacting with you through physical media. What, what is that? That's receipts, that's flyers, that's invoices, that's table tents, that's truck wraps, that's in-store signage. There's a lot of things that people may pick up, see, and act on if you simply ask them to do it. Lastly, obviously, online. Ask for people to join your list on your, on your website, on social media, and regularly on social media. Ask people to join your list off your Gmail signature, off your Outlook signature, off the bottom of your email where you have your name and your title. Have a link there that says get more information about us. And lastly, ask for people to join a list through a landing page. What is a landing page? Well, I actually showed you an example of that in the last slide. I'm about to show you an example of that in the next slide. But a landing page is simply a one-page mini website that you can uh, uh, create and make branded to you with your information, with your logo, that collects people's contact information. So here's an example of that landing page. And this landing page is doing something very, very special. Rather than asking people to join a list, the Backyard Cafe is offering people something of value, a dessert, right? Something of value. Now it's no longer about getting more email. It's about getting something of value. Uh, uh, so what are some things you can employ? Promotions and discounts is what most people think of, but it doesn't only have to be that. Some of the most powerful ways you can get people to join a list is through offering education. People love checklists. People love guides. Take your industry knowledge and your knowledge about your business and turn it into something educational. You may already even have con uh, content that you've developed in the past that you could use. Now, the big picture term for what I'm describing here is a lead magnet. You are offering a magnet to get more leads, right? And the reason you want to uh, uh, use a lead magnet is now it's about what's in it for them, 
not what's in it for you. It doesn't only have to be discounts or promotions, but you need to provide something of value so that when somebody joins your list, they receive that valuable uh, 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 thing that you're offering. Now, through constant contact, through a form like this, thanks to your relationship with Ramona, not only can you create a landing page like this, but you can deliver the reward either right from the landing page or even more strategic through an automated email. Constant Contact gives you the ability to fire off an email automatically as soon as somebody joins the list. So that might be a great place for you to provide that thing of value. So when you choose your lead magnet, it can be things like a loyalty, a referral program. It can be things like a, a giveaway, like you saw before. It can be things like an ebook download or a guide, a checklist, a workbook. It can be a webinar or a class. As long as it's evergreen, whatever you're offering needs to make sure you need to make sure that it is evergreen. Some people may be joining your list here in February. Some people may be joining your list in July. You don't want to offer something that is time sensitive, something that they can only get value of in March, right? You need to make sure that whatever you're offering is going to be valuable no matter when they join your list. Now, when we entice people to join our list, we wanna make sure that we're offering that lead magnet there at the top. So here we have another example of a lead magnet. It is a guide. We wanna keep the form simple. A lot of people will request people's contact information and ask people to fill out a 10 question form. The more questions you ask people on a form, the fewer responses you're going to get. So you need to make sure you're focused on collecting the, the bare bones information that will help you identify what kind of consumer, what kind of lead this is. You also need to make sure you're setting expectations. You're going to receive one message from us um, every single month. You're going to receive two emails from us every single month. You need to set those expectations. And if you are doing text marketing, as I said, this is a great place for you to collect the information but you also need to set privacy policies in terms of service. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about that once we get into text marketing. Once people sign up, you wanna make sure that you have a strategy, a regular strategy, and there's two kinds of emails that you can employ in general in your strategy. One is a promotional email, and most people knee jerk to the promotion. If they're gonna send out email marketing, it's gonna almost always be promotional. Our suggestion is you have a healthy mix. In fact, you wanna have less promotional emails coming out of your organization than promotional. You want to be sharing about 80% of your content about something education, something useful, something valuable, right? It doesn't and shouldn't always be promotional. Promotional can be a part of your strategy, but if all you do is offer product, service, discount, product, service, price point, product, service, donate, well, now you're burning your audience out. Remember the sales cycle. Not everybody can take action the second you send out an email. So if all you're doing is promoting all the time, now you're making your content irrelevant. And when you make your content irrelevant, people stop paying attention. People stop paying attention. Your email's hitting the inbox every single month or however often you're sending, and they're not even noticing it anymore. So we need a healthy mix. About 80% of your content when you send out email marketing should be something useful, and 20% of it needs to be promotional. This is the same ratio that you want to employ on social media and text marketing. For a for-profit, what you want to do when you're constructing an email, this is very basic, but you need to make sure you're aware that when it comes to email marketing, the average time reading an email is nine seconds. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we pe get people into that email. They need to understand what it is you're offering, how it will help them, and get them to take action as quickly as possible. As soon as they click on that link, now you get more time with them. Now they're thinking about pros and cons. Now they're thinking about positives and negatives. You get more time with them on your website, on your listing page, on your blog, or even looking at something like a PDF than they would in the email. The reason is because they made the commitment. They decided, I want to click that link. I want to learn more. They made that decision to spend more time with you. But what we're not going to do is reach an audience very effectively with an email that's really long and complicated because they can't identify these three things quickly. What are we offering? How does it help? And what do they do next? For nonprofits on the call or watching the recording, kind of the same idea. What are you trying to accomplish? How should the re Why should the reader care? And how can they get involved? We need to make sure that our content is succinct and tight so that people can open it and understand what they're supposed to do and how to do it as quickly as possible.
Now, the way we do that, some of you might be screaming at me and say, Matt, we've been doing email marketing for X number of years and our emails are really long because our customers expect it, because our stakeholders expect it. We need to share all the news in the world. Maybe your organization falls into that model, but I'd be willing to bet it probably doesn't. That nine second time frame has been driven by these devices. People have less and less attention span. And so our suggestion at Constant Contact, I know if she could speak, by the way, if you've just joined us, Ramona is here, but she has lost her voice. I know Ramona, if she could speak, would say, well, have you thought about segmentation? Segmentation is taking a large list and breaking up into smaller lists. That one gigantic email that you send out to everyone really probably is three different emails, five different emails. When you're speaking to different broad audiences through one email, you're probably not reaching any of them. The idea of taking one list and breaking up into smaller groups is allowing you to add more and send more relevant content. Not everyone is the same. Not everyone is interested in the same thing. Now, some common ways you can think about breaking your list up are seen here on the slide. Demographic. How old are they? What is their income? What is their marital status? Based on the kind of thing you offer, the kind of organization you are, that might matter, right? So you might want to make sure that you're sending content demographically to the right demographic or geographic for some of you with a physical presence or if you have some sort of geographic-based product or service, you'll want to think about their zip code, their city, their state, the area of town. An example of that is when I get an email from a school nearby that my kids don't attend. That is not de demographically correct or geographically correct, right? Lastly, and especially pay attention to what they do. If you are employing email marketing, go ahead and stop what you're doing. I know you're multitasking and listen to me right now. If you are currently using Constant Contact, if you are currently using any other tool, firstly, come to Constant Contact. Secondly, make sure you're paying attention to your open rates and your click-through rates. When people open an email from you, they are whispering to you, they're saying, I am interested in this information. Well, what information were they uh, uh, looking at? What was the email about? That's telling you something about them. And especially when they click a link in that email, they're telling you specifically what they're interested in. That helps you learn a lot about them. Well, I'm going to send them more of that kind of product. I'm going to send them more of that kind of uh, uh, education. I'm going to send them more information that they find valuable. And how do I know that they found it valuable? Because they took the time to click a link. Now, I have mentioned already the two emails you send a month, the one email you send a month, the four emails you send a month. And I know Bill is behind the scenes collecting questions right now, which is, how often should I send? Well, it depends. It depends. It depends on your audience. It depends on your content. Um, and it depends on how regularly you can send relevant content. I'll give you an example. I receive an email every morning at 8.30 a.m every morning, seven days a week. And I open almost every one of those emails. I read almost every one of those emails. It's from my bank, my account balance. Is that relevant to me? It sure is, right? Now, would I accept an email from Pizza Hut every day, seven days a week at 8.30? No, I would not. That is not relevant to me. It's more relevant than I'd like to admit, but it's not relevant to me, right? So it depends. What you really need to focus on is, uh, is the content relevant? And am I breaking my large list into smaller groups so I can send that relevant content? That might mean you can send more emails as long as you're thinking through something like segmentation to break your list up and send that kind of relevant content. Make sure you determine your best send frequency. So you want to consider your audience. What are they like? What might they consume? You want to pay attention to what they've done in the past. What kind of expectations you've set with them? Our suggestion is you send at least once a month. There are two patterns I've seen in all my years at Constant Contact. One is the, I got Constant Contact account. I'm going to send a lot of emails and then I'm going to stop because I got busy. Oh, that's not very helpful because what you're doing is you're setting the expectation that you're going to send out that email twice a month or once a month, and then you stop. Basically, you're sending nothing. That that means that that's irrelevant. You've become irrelevant. So when you try to get started again and you start to email them, you take a two-month break off, 
Now you're priming the pump again. Now you're trying to start from zero. What you want to do is send at least once a month. That way you're not having to prime the pump every time. And the other behavior I see is where people will get something like constant contact, send out one email, and then never send an email again. Well, you're just moving backwards. You want to make sure that you're sending regularly. Once a month is a cadence that almost any business, any nonprofit can follow, and at least is keeping you top of mind. At the bare minimum, it's keeping you top of mind. Now, for promotional emails, you can send a little bit more frequently, especially around things like events. If you have an event-oriented uh, business, well, you might send several emails <laughs> in one month. Maybe that announcement email, maybe a, actually a pre-announcement email where you're talking about save the date, then the announcement email, then the two weeks left to register, and then as you get closer, maybe you send three or four emails uh, uh, encouraging people to take action. It all depends on what you're offering the kind of business you are, and the kind of audience you service. Now, we have one more big topic to talk about, and that is the VIP party. Let's talk about using text messages for unique and timely messages. Text marketing starts with permission. So you want to, and you must ensure they opt in. You want to make sure that you have confirmed their uh, per uh, per participation. She was Matt. Certainly the, the fake Monday that it is. You want to make sure you're confirming that. So when they opt in, you need to say, hey, you've opted in. You also want to include things like terms of service and privacy policies, and you want to set expectations. You can see here, this person has signed up for this text, and they're being told to receive three uh, messages a month. And then they're also getting the ability to leave the list, and that's going to be important to think through. want to make sure we do those things because text marketing, just like email marketing, is permission-based, and we need to have permission to text people. Now, you might think, well, text messages, uh, who would do text messages? Um, well, let me show you how this works. So I was very fortunate enough to uh, uh, check off a bucket list item in my life two years ago. I was able to see Sir Paul McCartney in person, and that was actually my seat. I actually spent way too much money and got a really close seat to see Paul McCartney. But it struck me as we're waiting for him to come out, text me. Paul McCartney's asking me to text him. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up the story is because of the way he treated this as that VIP party. And of course, I know it wasn't Paul McCartney. It's one of his social media or his, his marketing people, right? But it's very personal. It comes from Paul and it's saying, hey, I want to keep in touch with you. He's setting the expectations. He's telling me how I can opt out. He's also encouraging me to take another step. He understands that text marketing is very personal and he's inviting me to take that personal experience even further by joining his community. You want to make sure you give people the ability to opt out. Even Sir Paul McCartney was telling people, you can leave my list if you're crazy. Um, you also want to be mindful of the time you're text marketing. While you can send social media posts, I wouldn't do it, but you can send social media posts at two in the morning. You want to be mindful of that text marketing is coming very sensitive space, notifications. Nobody wants to get a notification that they're going to have a discount for pizza at two in the morning. That's just going to annoy people. You want to generally send between the hours people are going to be paying attention to, and you don't want to rely on the area code to determine when those times are because people carry around area codes now. I carry around. I live in Florida. I still have a Massachusetts area, area code, right? You can't rely on the area code to determine what time zone people are in to, to send to them. Also at text marketing, you need to think of uh, about best practices and regulation. You want to identify yourself. You want to make sure that it's clear that this message is coming from you. You want to be mindful of having your content be very timely and very relevant. You don't want to be using text marketing to talk about something you're going to have coming up in six months. It needs to be very time sensitive. You need to be consistent, especially with text marketing, because if you're not, people are going to forget who you are and they're going to opt out and you're going to annoy them. You also want to try to keep marketing text to one text. Nobody wants to get two, three, four texts in a row about something you're offering. So you want to be mindful of uh, keeping your text very concise. Text messages should be unique content that people cannot find anywhere else. It should provide some value. It should be something personal. Remember, Paul was motivating me through the personality of those text messages to take even a further step in joining his community. And remember that most text marketing, or sorry, most text messages are conversational. You get a text and you respond to a text. Then you get another text, you respond to a text. It's like talking to people. So be mindful of how you write text. So here's a couple of examples of some text. Here's a B2B. So we're offering uh, holiday marketing ideas. So this is something very unique. We're uh, encouraging people to take an action or we're offering something very unique in terms of video creation. 
For nonprofits, same idea. We're offering um, something very unique, volunteers for this picnic, right? Time sensitivity. We're offering uh, very time sensitive. There are 10 pups, 10 pups in need. And we're marketing something very time sensitive here two weeks before the registration for this fun run. Retail, we're offering a discount that in soon, we're uh, telling people to take action uh, to save 10% using this code. And we're offering something that was out of stock that's now back in stock, relevant, timely content, relevant, timely, unique content. So when it comes to measuring results, one thing I encourage you to do, I've actually shared this through all three channels, need to be in it to win it. Don't do it halfway. If you're going to be on a social media channel, commit to it and pay attention to the comments, the likes and the shares. With email marketing, pay attention who opened the emails and especially what links they clicked on your emails. Same thing with text marketing. Pay attention to is your text marketing list growing? Are you getting clicks on links that you use in your text? Are you seeing conversions? Meaning are people doing the thing you're asking them to do? Are they buying more of this? Are they registering more of that? Are you seeing an increase in donations? Don't just set it and forget it. Make sure you're paying attention to the results. So last but not least, let's talk about how to create a great experience. And I told you I'd bring up concert. Well, I, Paul, I brought up Paul, uh, Paul Cartney, but you really want to use all of these channels in concert. To share how you do that, I'm going to actually show you a real world example. Constant Contact practices what we preach and Paul McCartney does too. You see Paul, he's a countdown for his concert, right? Then on his email, he's sharing something a little more intimate, right? It's not just a broadcast, hey, I have this concert coming up. He's offering something of value. And in text, he's offering something even more valuable. And now I will talk about constant contact. We practice what we preach. All right, so here I'm talking broad. Hey, make a, 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 um, this event's coming up. Narrow it down to, on email, a little bit more of a personal request, right? And then lastly, sharing, hey, the thing is coming up tomorrow. Make sure you register. We're moving people from the big party to the after party to the most intimate, the VIP party. We want to use all of these things in, in, uh, in concert. We want to increase the word of mouth for our businesses and nonprofits and hear the, how that works. Firstly, you're not going to get anywhere without this first bullet. You need to provide some sort of wow experience. There needs to be something people will talk about, them, something people are excited about, something people are interested in, right? It starts with your business, starts with your nonprofit. When you provide that wow experience, whether that's customer service or the quality of your product or the quality of your service, you need to then ask people to stay in touch. And the way that they can stay in touch, follow me on socials, join my mailing list and connect to me via text. You need to be in it to win it. If you're going to encourage people to stay in touch on social, you need to be regularly posting on social and paying attention to the responses. Encouraging them to join your mailing list, you need to be regularly sending that email. And if you're doing text marketing, you need to not only be regularly text, uh, texting people, but you need to be mindful that people need to engage with that text. That pushes business back to us, but that does not stop. We want to drive our visibility. So this cycle should constantly be repeating, but we also want to use it to spin off this social visibility because this is how we're going to grow our business beyond our current customers, our current clients, our current donors and volunteers. When we are providing a wow experience, staying in touch regularly, engaging with people, other people see that interaction, right? Especially on social media. So if somebody says, wow, I had a great experience with you and they say it on social, other people get to see that message. That allows you to grow new prospects that will then come into your store, come into your uh, uh, your website, come into your business, come into your nonprofit, and this cycle continues. This cycle never ends if you do a good job. So our takeaways, by the way, I'm gonna be taking a look at your questions. I know Bill's in the background taking questions from you right now, but I, and I, Ramona probably is too, although she's somehow managing this webinar and the live social feed at the same time. Um, but let's talk about some takeaways. Make sure you're using social media for uh, awareness and engagement. Make sure you're regularly asking people to join your email list, to join your text marketing list on social. So many organizations don't do that. Make sure you're using email to deepen the relationship, stay top of mind, and lastly, use text for unique offerings and timely messages. So the probably most unsurprising reveal I'm going to have today, Constant Contact does it all. Many of you, if you're unfamiliar with Constant Contact, or if you're familiar with Constant Contact, you probably know us as an email marketing solution. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise Bill. He works with Constant Contact too. 
Why? Because we've been in business for 27 years. We have built this brand on email marketing and we have the best deliverability in the business. We also have the best customer service in the business. We've been in business so long that we know how to do this and get your email delivered with an easy to use intuitive email marketing solution. The problem is many people may not be aware that we offer text marketing. We offer social media marketing. We offer social media ads, event registration, event marketing, and so much more. In most of our plans, you can do all of what I taught you in one spot. Create your social media posts, have them scheduled to go out over the month. Create your email, have those scheduled to go out over the month. Create your text marketing, have those go out over the month. And I wanna talk a little bit about this little guy right here. Struggle with what to say in your email, struggle with what to say in a text, struggle to what to say in social. Let artificial intelligence actually write the content for you. Artificial intelligence is so powerful that in constant contact, you can put a few words. If you can type five words, the AI, the artificial intelligence and the constant contact will actually build your entire email for you. The whole thing from bottom to top. And it's going to follow that pattern that I showed you earlier about what's in it for the reader. Why should they care? How do they take action? It does all of that for you. Now, I want to bring my friend, Bill, Shipley up on stage. He's going to unmute himself and he's going to tell you what he and Ramona cooked up. Bill? That's such a great introduction. Thank you so much for that, Matt. I certainly learned a lot today. Um, I hope everyone else did. So uh, Ramona and I were discussing some different strategies and how in ways that we can help everybody. Uh, and what we put together is that if you take out your camera and on most smartphones, just point the camera at uh, this little QR code, you will be brought to a spot that you can sign up for a free trial of Constant Contact Services. So once you get into that trial, you'll be able to start to apply your own contact list, upload your list, start to send a couple test emails, and start to really dive into what we learned today and how we can apply them. What you'll learn really quickly is that it's an incredible addition to your marketing approach, uh, and it's a really great tool in your tool belt. Of course, leveraging Ramona if needed to, you're within her network, uh, and you can reach out to uh, you know, her as, as needed, if needed. Uh, our support will be there for you as well. But once you kind of dive in and you start doing some of these aspects, you'll find you'll want to do it more. And of course, like Matt talked about, staying consistent is going to be the key. So once you get yourself to a point where you need a paid service, uh, you can use this discount, uh, which we're, I'm going to provide you. It's save 2024. So it's the word save 2024, and that will give you 30% off your first three months of Constant Contact Services. Uh, that's for new clients only. If you are an existing or if you'd like to prepaid, we offer some prepaid discounts as well. If you pay for six months at a time, there is going to be an additional 10% off that's stackable on the discount that is that I provided you with. Um, it's also, um, I'm getting a, a message here, you can screenshot it and you're able to use that um, as well. I'm also gonna plop the link in the chat um, that will bring you to a sign up page, um, but you're able to, I'm going to go ahead and plop that for folks that are messaging here. Perfect. So you have a uh, cap the capability of paying for six months in advance for a 10% discount. Again, that's stackable. Um, or you can pay 12 months in advance and get 15% off. Now, that will come off of the designated plan that you're selecting and then the size of your contact list. But again, if you're a new client, stackable on top of the other discount. So some great ways to save some money, uh, add this incredible tool to your marketing tool belt and take advantage of everything we learned today uh, from the great Matthew Montoya. Uh, anything else I can uh, cover? I, and I know Ramona, you had lost your voice, so I'm sure you'd come in with a great bow here and, and send off to us, but uh, we can help save that if you'd like. Uh, She's trying, and She's trying to talk. <laughs> thank you. I hear, I'm hearing a big thank you, uh, thank which is you. great. I did drop the link in the chat. So if anyone wants to sign up there, um, save 2024 for that discount. That's uh, specific to this partnership um, and the connection to uh, Ramona. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the last thing I would just say, Bill, is, is who are you and why are you talking? <laughs> there is that, right? Thank you. Well, it was just your- Public speaking your... 101, my friend. 
Your, yeah, absolutely. Your introduction was just so robust that I just took it all. Uh, so I am a key account manager for Constant Contact. Uh, and what I do is I work with a segment of partners, uh, Ramona included, and talk about some of the strategy on how to help support her uh, and bring in more uh, clients that she can help and really just a big portion of my job on a day-to-day -day basis is talking about how folks are taking advantage of one aspect of our platform. And like Matt talked about, not knowing that we have AI built into our solution or not knowing that we have SMS or automation or segmentation in these. And, and that's a big piece of the success uh, to be able to leverage all aspects of the tools that we offer to really take full advantage of a uh, very successful marketing campaign. And with that, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat. I'm not seeing a lot of questions. So this is the point of the presentation. Unless you're seeing something I'm not, Bill, are you seeing any other questions? Nope, that's, um, I've been covering um, the whole way. It was the smartphone one, but I think the links will certainly save that. The one that it looked like uh, Ramona had um, popped in there, I believe that has the discount also uh, included. So a couple solutions there to be able to get to this if you don't have your smartphone, or perhaps you're watching this on your smartphone. Uh, and, and that would be the way to to accomplish that. Well, then I'm going to do the part of the presentation where I slowly walk away and say goodbye, but I'm looking at those questions. Hey, I want to thank you, everybody, for your time today. Thank Bill for his participation, uh, both on screen and behind the scenes, and especially thank Ramona for having me in front of you today. Please reach out to Ramona through social media and various other channels where she will be also reaching out to you if you have any questions after today's presentation. And make sure you keep an eye open for the recording of this. I believe she said she's going to be hosting that on YouTube. For those of you on Zoom, thanks for uh, joining us today and putting in comments and questions. And for those of you on social media, thank you for engaging with Ramona there. And I will say a hearty thank you one last time on behalf of Ramona and her lost voice. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Have a good rest of your week and take care of each other. Bye-bye.